Friends, welcome to our homestead, welcome to our shop. From time to time, we make furniture, and we try to do that in the most cost-effective way possible. We usually do it with construction lumber. Today, we're gonna to be making a twin bed frame for my daughter, and we are going to be using two by fours. We're also gonna be using some cool joinery at the ends that's really simple to do. We're gonna be using about seven two by fours and some one by two furring strips. We're also going to be using some dowel rods. The total cost for the build is right around 40 bucks. And then on top of that, we're just going to be using a few screws. So that will add to the cost just slightly. Let's get going and show you how to do it. So this is for a demonstration to start with. We are going to cut the same notch in all three pieces. And this is for the bottom part of the frame. For the headboard, it's a little bit different. These are two of the legs, but I'm gonna demonstrate how the joint goes together. So basically, I'm gonna slide this in here and we're gonna leave room for the other joint to come in on top of it. When the joint is complete and the full frame is together, it's very strong in compression. But you and I know kids, so there's gonna be a bit of lateral movement on it. And that's why I'm gonna drill down through the center of the joint and place a dowel. And what that'll do is lock everything in place. Now, if you wanna be able to take this apart all the time, you're not gonna use a dowel. I would use a screw. A standard twin mattress is 75 inches by 38 inches. So on the end boards, we're gonna cut them 45 and a half inches and on the sideboards, we're gonna cut those 83. So one of the side rails at 83 inches and one of the legs at 13 inches, which is a perfect amount of space for underneath the bed, will equal 96 inches or one eight foot two by four. But don't worry about those measurements. I will have a cut list below. Now let's get to cutting the rest of our lumber for our bed. The first cut for the notch we're gonna make is on our table saw. And you're going to need to set up a jig or a stop for that. Now you can cut back on both sides to that three and a half inch notch depth. If you need to make or mark the line at that three and a half inch point, do so. You can use any sort of saw to do that. You can use a Japanese style hand saw like this, a small trim saw like this. Maybe it's a little bit larger saw, but for us, we're gonna use a jigsaw. It's a lot easier. Since the blade of the jigsaw or any other saw is thinner than that table saw blade, you really want to mark on the edge, the outside edge of your table saw blade cut. Now it's easiest for me to drill a hole right in the center so we can get our jigsaw blade in here and cut out the bottom. And then if you need to, clean things up on the bottom with a chisel. Then on the inside where that jigsaw blade was, you can clean it up with your chisel so it's nice and flush. And for us, on these sharp corners, we're gonna take a 1 8 inch round over bit with our hand router and just round those off so they're not so sharp. And you can always do that with a sander if you don't have a router. Here's the basic frame together, and if you make these joints tight enough, it's solid as a rock. It's not going anywhere. Now we need to work on the headboard and the support for the mattress itself. Before I work on that headboard, I am going to show you how to dowel one of the end joints. If your joint is a little loose around where it connects, you can use that dowel like I mentioned before. So for me, I'm going to use my drill press because I have it and it's available to me. If you don't have it, you can use a hand drill. It's just a little harder to keep the hole straight as you're going through the top of this partial castle joint. I've set up a stop on this or a guide so that my drill bit stays centered on my board on this dimension. Of course, make sure your drill bit is the appropriate size for the dowel that you have. Now, unless you have a really long drill bit that's appropriate to go over dimensions of three and a half inches, you're gonna have to use a hand drill 
to come in and drill through into your other piece. For our headboard, we're gonna create two square holes or two mortises. One on this side, five inches in from our notch, and one on this side, five inches in from our notch. So on the flat side of the headboard, this is where our hole is going to be. It is five inches in from the bottom of the notch, and it's an inch and a half wide. Its length on this side is an inch and three quarters. So seven eighths in from each side. I'm again going to use my drill press to just start some holes here, and then I will use my jigsaw to cut everything out. Once we get the mortise holes cut in the bottom of our headboard base and the holes drilled for the dowels that will go through them, we can work on our supports for our headboard. Now we're going to cut two boards at 30 inches long for our headboard supports. You can certainly cut them taller than that if you want your headboard to be a bit taller. On each one of the supports, we are going to come in and we're going to measure up seven and a half inches. From there, we're going to take off the outside portion about three quarters of an inch. You can angle the top here a bit so your headboard doesn't sit straight up, it tilts back a tiny bit. Mine is angled at about seven degrees. And then that is going to fit right down into our end board. Now we can drill the rest of the hole through our centerpiece and fit that dowel in place. Now we're gonna cut one 40 inch board for our headboard cross member. Now, you can choose to actually do two depending on how high you want your headboard. That's the beautiful thing about this design, is you can modify it as you see fit. Our backboard vertical supports are done. What I'm gonna do now is notch out about two inches from the top, I'm gonna notch out a half inch deep notch. What that's gonna do is accommodate the back cross piece and give it a little bit more strength and support, and we could put a dowel right through there as well. Let's take these over to the table saw and do a cross cut through both of these. Make sure you have the correct side aligned that you want to cut. I'm gonna line these boards up and actually clamp them together so I can cut both at the same time. We'll just clean these notches up with our chisel and we will be good to go. Now that we've got our notches cut out, our headboard cross member will fit nicely in there and we can drill holes for our dowels. And as you can see on the end, I gave an angle cut to that cross member just for a little bit of style and interest. Our bed is coming along, we have the headboard on. Now the next step is to get the mattress supports on. So we need rails along the sides for that support. Now you can do it one of several different ways. You can either purchase two by twos, which can be a little sketchy because they twist a lot. Modern wood is really weak and it warps really easily. So you can cut those from a two by four if you choose to just buy two by fours. And then for the support slats that run across, you can either buy these one by two furring strips or you can again, cut these out of a two by four. Whatever makes financial sense for you to do, do it. Now you can also choose to put a piece of plywood down in the middle for your support for your mattress, but the edges are going to be resting on the side rails. Again, that's another design aspect that I will leave up to you, whatever you feel is best for your needs. And that's especially true if you have a more modern mattress like a memory foam mattress that is a lot heavier than your traditional single spring mattresses. And I'm gonna cut these two by two side rails at 73 inches. Along our side rails, we're gonna come through and put a screw every 10 inches. What we're gonna do is start two inches from the end first, then measure every 10 inches all the way down. We're gonna to need to pre-drill these holes because this pine is fairly weak. And then also for the holes, we are gonna use a countersink bit and just countersink it a little bit so it's nice and flush. Then we're gonna use two and a half inch screws to go through the support rail into the side rail on the bed frame. And yes, I am just using construction screws for this. We've got our support slats sitting on here. Now make sure you drill and countersink for each one of them because these one by two furring strips can split incredibly easy right at the edge. And as you can see, I added that one by four here in the center for just a little bit added extra support. 
And on these, I'm just using one and a quarter inch construction screws. Now, before we insert our dowels and connect everything together that way, we need to finish this. So I need to do a lot of sanding over all these parts because that construction lumber can have some pretty serious stains on it and dirt and damage. So we need to get all of that off. And I'm not going to show you that because this isn't a finishing video. You can finish it however you want and you'll see the final product in just a second. Well, there we go, friends. It is done. The mattress is on it and it's ready for my daughter to sleep on it. The joinery on this bed is really simple to do, even if you just have hand tools. And I know all of you can do it with no problem. And besides being very easy to do, it's very inexpensive to make this bed frame. Now click on this playlist right here, which is our whole series of woodworking videos here on the homestead. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.